Welcome to Playful Podcast, your guide into the underground scene where we discover topics on kink and electronic music every week. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss out on our next episode. We are super excited to be here today with the French DJ producer and label owner of Lumière Noire, Chloe. Chloe has been involved in dance music for over two decades and in this conversation we speak about what music has meant for her in her upbringing, her view on career and how she made the decision on focusing on music, what her fears for the electronic music scene are and so much more. This is a lovely conversation and I once again apologize for my voice. But let's get to it. I am Amanda and this is Playful Podcast. Chloe, we are so excited to have you here in Playful Podcast. Thank and you. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, we are so happy. And now in a couple of hours you will play in Panorama Bar. And I was just asking you because so many artists say that it's very special to them. And as a club goer, I also think it's an amazing club. But why would you say it's special for you? Yeah, it's very special for me to play uh, at uh, Panorama Bar, going to Bergam first, because uh, I mean, this place is just amazing because it has its own singularity. The building, of course, is like just a special piece of art, I would say, like the architecture is just amazing. So you would definitely not find another place like this in the world where there's like big parties going on. But also the atmosphere is very special, like the sound system and... Yeah, and I feel that it's very peaceful somehow. And uh, yeah, and, and I have the feeling also by playing uh, four hours is special because you have the time to bring something special, yes. You know, generally when I'm booked in a party, um, like uh, I usually play like for ex- like two hours, mm. which is great. And it's um, generally like peak time. But there in Panorama Bar, you never know exactly when it is the peak time because I have the feeling it's always the peak time. <laughs> and it starts at midnight the day before, you know. So, yeah, yeah, I kind of like this. Like, we just all express ourselves um, with our own uh, identity somehow, and I yeah. like it. I always like to find some nice and share the desk with other artists just before and after, you know, and it's great, yeah. Yeah, and when it comes to the journey that you spoke about, or like the four hours, that it's how do you work with that? Like, how do you make the audience follow? And maybe it's a tricky question because it's hard to formulate, but do you understand what yes. I mean? Yeah. Um, yes, actually, uh, I generally, um, I- I'm not this kind of uh, DJ. I mean, I'm from a scene where we don't prepare 100 percent the set in a way that of course we receive a lot of uh, uh, demos from friends from um, promo promotion uh, PR you know and um, we buy also some music so uh, I, l- I love to dig before and search for some music and in my old playlist and everything but then uh, when I'm playing, it's a question of uh, intuition. That's something like, you know, you're prepared somehow, but there's a fact that uh, you are like, um, there's this freedom of creativity because uh, you don't know exactly what you're going to play. And each room and each place has its own uh, sound system, each, its own crowd. And so every set is different, I would say. So. This is what I love. It's like you, you, you n- don't know exactly where you want to go, but slowly you're going somewhere and you build something with the, with the crowd and the moment you are in. So this is the most exciting thing. So having four hours set is just perfect because you can go through a lot of uh, different uh, sounds and textures and yeah, tempos and you can uh, build a set somehow. Yeah. All right, now I'm going to go back to the start of the interview, <laughs> where I normally start. If you would describe yourself with three words, what would they be? Uh, well, it's always um, a bit tricky to uh, describe myself uh, somehow, but um, I would say I'm uh, like obsessive. Um, I'm uh, 
um, like a dreamer also, uh, a bit like disconnected somehow from uh, <laughs> very concrete uh, things. Um, and but also deter determined. Determined. Know, determined. Yeah. Probably it goes with uh, obsessive somehow, yes. <laughs> yeah, have you always been or only when it comes to music or with other things as well? I think it's, uh, this. I have this thing with music and everything. I mean, probably if I was not so obsessive determined, I would not be in electronic music or probably I would not produce music because when it comes to digging some music, you have this kind of um, yes, obsessive uh, uh, thing where you want to listen more and more to some music and discover some music. It's like uh, like super um, like it's when it's a passion, you know. So, um, but you have to work on on it, and you have like also when I'm in the studio, I'm I'm sometimes taking a lot of times with little details or or knowing some uh, plugs or uh, treatments and uh, everything, you know, you have to take a lot of time somehow. I mean, I'm this kind of person that take a, takes a lot of time for it. But also, um, probably this helps me to find uh, also the answer and find uh, a result. So yeah. it's, it's a helpful, uh, it's a helpful process being, yeah. uh, this way. <laughs> I mean, I try to turn in positively. Yeah, so like back in school, if we look at who you were as a teenager, were you pretty much the same person you are now? Were you also like a music nerd and focused on that? Or like who were you in, in compared to the other students, for example? Um, I think I was, I, I was, when I was younger, I was uh, shy and reserved. Uh, kind of independent and uh, but at the same time I had this balance that worked together I don't know how like this kind of uh, not knowing exactly what I wanted but and I was not so self-confident of course but and I'm still not so self-confident but I know more of course what I want because uh, of the experience but I'm still having this balance of not being self-confident and being determined. I don't know how that work together. So somehow it helps me to go further. So probably when I was younger, it took me more time to uh, do things uh, because I was not sure uh, exactly wh what I wanted to do and everything. But I was very intuitive also, like very... Uh, I was very uh, self-confident, I, I mean, b af af years after years, um, being, um, I, 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 of course I was more self-confident, you know. I feel this is like a psychoanalyse. Yeah. <laughs> we have the thing of psychoanalyse. Therapy uh, now. Therapy. <laughs> Thank you. See you next week. <laughs> same time, same place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, but, um, all right, let's go into your musical journey instead. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, of course, going into a musical journey is, is uh, like going into uh, probably myself too. Yeah, because okay. This is the how Next you layer build. of the onion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but like, was there every moment where you decided that you are going to pursue music no matter what? <clears throat> uh, pursue music? Like, that you are going to like work with music. Ah. This is what you're going to do and you're going to try to give your all to be able to make it work. Mm. But this is a fu funny thing is that I, I, I actually never decided really that it would become a job somehow, you know, because I was doing music and I was I, when I was younger, I was uh, listening to a lot of music because of my parents who had like a big uh, record collection. And um, I, I started guitar like early and like was on a four track mixer and trying to reproduce some music I was listening to, you know. So music helped me a lot in my life. It was like something that was very important to me to, um, yeah, to, to like making something and it was a very emotive for me. So I was um, like, it, yeah, it was uh, healing me somehow. I mean, I was not sick or whatever, but I was like really loving it, to be in music. On. 
but I never thought that it would become a job one day, honestly. I never saw me as a singer or a guitar player or never wanted really to be part of a band or something, you know, I just liked music. Then I was at school and, and I, I discovered electronic music in the raves in the mid-90s and, 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 and at that time the electronic music was, was very underground and was not as it's big today, you know, so the only way to have music was to have um, some vinyls and to buy them and so I, I just started to play this way, you know, and I started to become DJ, but I never thought again that I would become a DJ. This was not the idea. What was the idea? There was no idea. Ah, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> no, there was no idea. The idea was you just wish to have, there was, there was, the idea was just to have fun. I love that, but that sounds like you are so not anxious of the pressure that society is putting on us. But we have, we need a career, we need a, you know, there are so many stuff that is like, but you were living outside of that, you Honestly, think? Honestly, I, I mean, uh, I had this pressure of, okay, what I'm going to do in my life, you know? So I uh, studied law in the years, besides I was uh, DJing, I w after I went to university, I studied law for years. And, um, and the more I was going in laws, and the more I thought, I don't want to do this. I mean, it was very interesting, but I didn't want to become a lawyer or judge or something. I mean, it was very interesting, but university also gives you a lot of time to do a lot of things besides your, your studies, because it's university, you know. So I was uh, doing a lot of uh, music production and uh, I, I was uh, doing uh, also theater and I was also uh, going out a lot, you know, and yeah. DJing, you know, and it was uh, good because it gave me a, a little bit of money to buy some gears more and more slowly, you know. So it's just that what happened is just that I stopped, make, I stopped studying law and yeah. then there was music. Uh, and and yeah. then I, I decided that, okay, I, I, I would decide later what I want to do, but for the moment, I just don't want to continue to do law, so I just continue to, to produce music, and, and here I am still. I, I still haven't decided what to do. <laughs> Love that. That's amazing. Some continue some not deciding. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting that you said that you didn't have self-confidence and now that you speak about it, it just sounds like, you know, studying law it takes a lot of good grades, like a, a, a good study brain and all these things. And theater is like an extroverted yes. thing. Yes. And music, getting gigs is yes. more internal probably, but still there are so many things where it's just that you believed in yourself. Do you think mm. that you got self-confidence through music in some way? Yes, you're right. I mean, music really uh, helped me to become uh, who I am. I think uh, I was... Uh, I like the, the, the flow in music. I, I mean, I, I like, you know, when something... Uh, I mean, even when you look at a movie and you're touched by, by a movie, I like that you forget things and you are inside it, you know? And music gives me the same thing, especially when I make music or when I play music, I have the same thing, the same flow. I like to keep this uh, intuitive uh, moment, you know? Like just being cool and having this... Uh, for me, it's a chill moment, you know? It's really, uh, yeah, it's an introspective thing that I'm happy to share, of course, you know? So let's say I make money with my uh, sharing uh, music, you know? I mean. The idea was not to make money, the idea was just to have the time and uh, to make what I love and to continue to make it. So I just find, found ideas on how to continue to not make other things I didn't like, you know. So I didn't know exactly what I wanted, but I knew what I didn't want. So my intuition was mainly this, and sometimes it's not very helpful because uh, when you... You, of course, you always have to make things you don't want to do. This is our lives. But it was always the idea of escaping the, this, the things, you know, to just continue and have pleasure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, you, you have been doing it for more over two decades now. So it's a, it's a long time. And you've seen the whole scene change a lot. And I mean, 
probably or like that's what you hear that this wasn't really something you could see as a job before in this genre yes genre exactly and now suddenly people are touring like crazy yes and what has been your like integration to it all was it ever did it ever get too stressful that you thought you want to quit or or how mm -hmm. yeah I mean, the essence of electronic music is that you always have to adapt yourself, you know, because electronic music is evolving all the time, it's changing all the time. There's always like some new music going on. And as I'm uh, making uh, music also, I'm always very curious with uh, gears and plugins and uh, new things, you know, you always have to adapt yourself to what's going on and you're always aware. aware with what is going on. So there's this curiosity that is still there that is like, uh, I would say like it's digging in records, you know? So for me, it's the same idea that I still have today. So I find it really interesting to see how you, how you continue to, um, to be yourself and taking all these elements and see where you want to go with these elements and how you, you know, the idea is to find this balance of staying yourself uh, inside uh, these old things changing. So, of course, it's sometimes a complicated balance because uh, sometimes I don't want to think too much, but you have to, you know. So, I'm the idea is always to try to find the space to keep place for the music and and digging and everything then of course there are things that i knew that were not there in the beginning like as you were saying like being more like um, being like your own manager of your own life you know of, of your own uh, career somehow like we never we didn't speak about career in the beginning it became a uh, more like, um, uh, like it became a job actually. It became a real job. But when I started, I, I, I never s thought it would be a, j a real job. I mean, especially as a woman, you know? Yeah. Because I didn't know anyone really like in that were like uh, doing it uh, in the way I wanted to do it. So I just did it my own way and saying like, let's see where it goes. And then if it fell, I don't mind, you know? It's just like, I, I was not looking very far. So you, that sounds I'm, so refreshing. <laughs> and I'm still not looking. Um, I, I, I just want to continue to, to do my thing, you know, and have fun. And I think it's very, I think it's very inspiring to be, to let yourself open to like how the, the world is changing also and how you get like connected and to uh, what is changing, you know. Oh God, I think when you speak to me, it's so obvious that you have been like somehow raised by music. <laughs> That's weird to say, but yeah. I mean, I just feel that some music is so much in the moment, you know, you're following mm. it. Mm. And like, yeah, people draw lines between electronic music and like classical music or jazz or, mm. you know, these things that are just like, you don't really know what's coming yes, next. Yes, yes, yes. And you are, to me, speaking just like you're living this kind of <laughs> mm. mentality. <laughs> That's incredible. I am so, I don't know, it makes me just happy to hear it. Mm. It's refreshing and we want cool. more of this. That's <laughs> why. Yeah, I think that just takes the passion even further for people like me who enjoy mm. just being there. But, um, all right, now I'm gonna try a little bit if you also think a little bit ahead. Do you have any fears for the scene in the future? I mean, specifically for, if we speak about the fear for specifically the scene, I would say, I would say that we should not forget where we come from. And I mean, electronic music comes from, uh, was very underground and uh, was um, mainly done by, by marginalized people, you know, and uh, I think uh, we shall continue to uh, keep some safe places uh, to, some, uh, to this scene. 
and uh, I mean promoters, uh, DJs, and even the the crowd. We should we shall continue to all be educated with uh, uh, this um, idea of creating this safe place. And there's a lot of harassment going on in some clubs and of course everywhere. So. Yes, we shall continue to have uh, these values and uh, because this music has values, it comes from values, important and strong values of, uh, of uh, equity and uh, of uh, respect and uh, yes, it's, it shall continue this way and this is probably somehow that makes somehow this is the only thing that somethi sometimes uh, makes me angry when I see or hear stories like it makes me feel very angry and I think that we shall continue really to continue this uh, idea yeah. we have now come to the part of the podcast where if you are or want to become a Patreon and listen to our extra material go to patreon.com slash playful magazine and in this extra material we get to know more about Chloe's production journey how she works in the studio and what rituals she got in there and so much more as I said, go to patreon.com slash playful magazine. So if we, if we focus on your own production, when you feel uninspired, do you have any way on how to like trigger inspiration, like a life hack, <laughs> life hack or something? Um, yeah, I mean, it often happens that I don't have inspiration, but I've always found a balance be, by being um, I, I always go in the studio anyway and um, sometimes I just take some time with technical issues you know you can take a lot of time with technical issues <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> for me yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like people you know in the flat that that work at their home and they just do the cleaning the whole day you know just to escape <laughs> the fact that they should work you know so I would say I, I, I spend a lot of time in, in my studio tr sometimes cleaning my studio and uh, going into technical issues or just finding some new gears and new tools I like to find some new routing in my um, in my setup you know I, I don't like to have one setup because I find it really like you 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 in a frame and you do, it's good but sometimes it's like you you need to get out of it so it's uh, fun to just try and move some gears and uh, have some friends uh, where you you know you just exchange for one week some gears and then you try it then you, you find things that are exciting you know so and this gives you uh, spontaneous uh, yeah expression and uh, ideas so it's uh, yes this would be the idea <laughs> I love that that is something I never heard before and it's <laughs> really? completely making sense because <laughs> I, I think you just have to disconnect and and then sometimes exactly Very thank important. you so so much Chloe <laughs> this has been amazing thank you so much I have a little something and that is something I call this or that this what? This or that. This or that. So okay. I give you two alternatives and you say which one fits in the most on you. Or which one you prefer. Can be both, can be none. <laughs> but let's see. Okay. It's either this or it's that. This is this or that. So New York or Bahamas? Okay. Uh, New York. New York, more city. Yes, I yeah. mean, I would be bored somehow at one point in Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only for vacation, though. Vacation, cool. But I mean, on vacation, I, I, I'm always like uh, half half, like on vacation, but always a bit. Uh, I always need a bit. Uh, I, I'm never 100 percent disconnected. Like I'm always like uh, digging or working a little bit, but I don't think I'm working. So, yeah, yes. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, FKK or bathing suit? What is FKK? It's like Freikörperkultur, you know, like the German, you swim naked. <laughs> you lay naked on the beach, the whole family, and like enjoy the freedom. Okay, bathing suit. Yeah. <laughs> but I respect. The French way. <laughs> the French way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, daytime open air or nighttime intimate cellar, like cellar gig? It's complicated because I really like both. Probably uh, open air, daytime. Yeah. Yes. All right. 
takes me a little bit to the next question. Summer or winter? Uh, summer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, rap or heavy metal? Heavy metal. Yeah? Yes. I've been to the Hellfest festival actually last year. Do you know it? It's yeah. like in France. It's so big. I've been there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I was there for one day actually and I really loved it so much. Like the energy is just amazing. There was some uh, like very heavy metal, hardcore uh, bands. Uh, I mean, the more heavy and hardcore was uh, going on and the most amazing it was because the energy is amazing and the crowd was so nice, you know, it's like, whoa. It's another yeah, world. It you know, is we have the nice electronic, crowd. Uh, we have the electronic scene, but the heavy metal is just uh, another scene that is like very, very big and amazing. Yeah. Very interesting. I feel some connection somehow with some electronic music sound also, you know. Yes. There's yeah. a lot of... Uh, I love this uh, no wave inspiration. There's, there's some... Uh, you know, both of um, both are connected somehow also, yes. And the energy also, like, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Tinder <coughs> or meeting at the bar? Meeting at the bar. Yeah. I figured somehow. <laughs> it's more in the in the moment. moment. <laughs> Teaching others or being taught? Both. It's difficult to say so. Uh, today I would say teaching others maybe. Yeah. But I'm still I still need to be taught. Yes. Yeah. Not to not to be too stupid. Yeah, know? yeah, no, it's important <laughs> actually to be open. <laughs> okay, strict door policy or open to all? Open to all. Open to all. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Thank you. <laughs> This was it for Playful Podcast this week, but please follow, subscribe and listen to our next episode. And if you want to have a say about future artists or even ask your own question to one of our guests, follow us on Instagram and make sure to add your question when we lift our coming guests. Thank you so much for joining and see you next week.